Hello and welcome. This is Ageless John teaching the second part of a tutorial on the background infora information about the splash screen that we did an episode or two ago. One of the things you may have noticed that we use is something called relative layout. Uh, and this is uh, one of the actually most useful uh, layouts that's uh, used. That one and let me see, the other one probably is linear layout, depending on which uh, version you're using. And uh, there are several others, you know, the web view layout, uh, which I don't even know if it's listed here. Uh, frame layout, grid layout, table row, table layout. They all have their different functions. And so these are all similar, but let's look at uh, what a relative layout does. It is a, a layout where the widgets, these things down here, are represented in respect uh, to previous widgets or a parent view. Um, let's say, for instance, I want to put another small text here. Look how it is relative to the parent. And these layouts you can actually place on your uh, user interface here and then create areas of that specific type of layout. Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, delete that and then I wanted to show you an example of the difference between the two major ones that we'll be using is relative layout uh, most of the time and then linear layout. So I'm going to create a new resource file, linear layout, file name, line test, and just click OK. And then when you go into line, it should open out automatically. Go in the text, make sure it says linear layout, linear layout. And then when you go to activity, and then test, relative layout. That's that's the difference right there. Uh, that will make all the difference in the world in designing. So linear, what we're going to do is we're going to drop down a couple of text uh, views. And look how they're centered left and right. It's very different from how uh, things are located on your main. So let's go back into main design view and let's pick up a text and look how it is relative to other things on the screen. So it's a huge difference uh, in how things are uh, placed. So we're done with this. I'm going to go here, here. I'm going to delete it. Another thing that we looked at was under Java, this right here, the package name. Now at some point in the future when you get yourself into a situation where you're able to publish your apps on the internet through Google or whatever format you decide to use, uh, this right here can be a problem because pretend like you just bought your own web page in order website to publish and you've been using this for like a month and a half or two months building the most awesome app in the world that's going to make you a million dollars and you don't know how to change the name so there's actually two ways to do that uh, my preferred way I've never actually done this but if you open module settings and go here to flavors you can change your application ID right here another one that I've heard people say uh, also works uh, it seems to be a little bit slower but if you go in create a new project with the proper uh, name and then just copy everything over to the new project and then delete the old project that that also works so one of the things that we uh, also did was we imported some Java code especially here now this is Java so um, this is not a Java tutorial if you don't have a very good concept of what Java is there are a ton of tutorials out there about the basics of, of Java uh, what we did was we imported um, several classes uh, we're using the method of uh, thread here we use the method of thread uh, we use sleep and this is in milliseconds so this is about three seconds that that's the length of time that we made it sleep and then towards the end we wanted to start so we used start to start the thread 
we didn't want the splash screen to be shown again if for some reason the user were to use the back button. So what we did is uh, use this down here. Uh, this is the on pause method and the on pause method is part of the activity class uh, which comes into play uh, when the user leaves the activity. Another thing that we did is we uh, added some aspects of code to the Android manifest XML. Now if you look at this, this is the activity that is a splash screen and this is the activity which is our main activity. So that's the order in which things are, are, are executed. Now there is a very important aspect of this uh, how things are run. The things are run very specifically and we'll run into this a lot uh, throughout this tutorial. The activity will start uh, there's a group of actions that will be taking place on on create, on start, on resume, and then activity is running. All right, so this is how an activity starts up. Um, another activity comes in front of the front of the activity. For instance, you open another app. So then you pause the app that you were running, and then do this with another app but at some point you can resume the same app switch back to it and the activity is running again and so this right here is a, a very useful piece of information that you need to know how things work and what the logic is behind it and you know how the order of things are and this uh, helps you um, for instance on pause other application needs memory process is killed user navigates back to the activity on create so if you create a situation where you have to have app memory available on something that's paused it's gonna get killed but normally it's just gonna get paused and then resumed uh, now just by the nature of time it pauses after you've ignored for a while you know your phone goes black uh, the activity is no longer visible uh, then on stop if you stop it and close the program there's an on destroy state and then the activity is shut down uh, so that's how this 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 works so this is really cool uh, I'm glad I found it I believe you can find this back on the Android uh, uh, studio website and I will post a copy of this on my web page so that uh, anybody who wants to look at it and grab a, a copy of it can uh, can do so Thank you for joining me. This has been Ageless John teaching another tutorial on Android Studio and creation of apps. And if uh, you want to try to avoid some of that rendering issue, you can always uh, go back in here and change this back to uh, default light uh, before you exit. Uh, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and to subscribe.